Mic check. All right, look, so this damn um, microphone's not working. I got to get that fixed. Now I got two microphones that are down. The damn microphone was working well the other day. I don't know why it's uh, not working right now. But hey, that's a technical issue. So basically, I've been. I've been on this live for five minutes talking and the microphone doesn't work. So basically um, what I was saying is, look, every Sunday I'm going to be doing this uh, show about nothing every Sunday, starting at around noon. And uh, I'm doing this because I want to make sure that if folks want to tune into the channel, they have a set time where they can actually reach the channel and reach me and talk. And we have a conversation on talk on live, talk about whatever the case may be. So a show about nothing is an idea that I got. And I've seen other folks reference this idea back to Seinfeld, where Seinfeld, uh, they were pitching the idea, say, hey, how about we make a show about nothing? And then they pitched the idea, show about nothing, right? So as ridiculous as it sounds, uh, Essentially, it's just uh, uh, a show about nothing where I am just whatever idea that comes to mind or whatever any of you in the audience have a question or comment or a topic to talk about, we talk about it. So my, my plan is every Sunday, 20, 30, an hour even, uh, just to talk, talk about different things that's going on, whatever comes to mind. Uh, one thing I want to talk about that comes to mind to me is planning, planning for the future. Uh, I notice that a lot of folks, uh, essentially there's a, there's, a, there's a saying in the military where if you do not have a plan, you are planning to fail. And I repeat that. If you do not have a plan, you are planning to fail. So plan. If you do not plan, you are planning to fail. So make sure you have a plan and whatever you want to do. And, and with that plan, you need to, you know, take steps to get close to that plan. So you got a plan. And right now, you're not doing what you need to do to get closer to the destination of that plan or to achieve that, that goal. Then you need to fix what you're doing, right? You need to fix it. The analogy I like to use is a step ladder where you have, you're at the bottom of the step ladder and there's different steps to get to the top which is your goal, your destination. All right, so what are you doing to get to the first step, to the second step, the third step, so that you can make your way to get to that, uh, your destination, to reach your goal. So plan, 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 plan. Uh, and even when you do achieve your goal, the planning does not stop. The strategizing does not stop, right? Uh, another way to look at it is you're, you know, you look at those guys that play chess, and they're so good in their strategy where they can have different boards set up, right? And they can play this board with one strategy, play this board with another strategy, and play this board with another strategy. So that's basically how you got to go about life, man. You got to, you know, plan using uh, different different strategies on, on different levels uh, and different playing fields. And that's how you need to go about go about. Uh, doing things. I tell you this. Um, I got to where I'm at now. Some say luck. Some say they don't. You know, there is no luck. You don't. You know, they don't believe in luck. I say there is. I do. I do believe in luck. That there are. There is luck. However, there's also work that needs to get put in that helps you get to where you want to go so that things do work out in the way you want them to. I strategize and I got lucky. And the combination of all that, I got to be where I'm at now. Uh, life is not perfect, but life is good. I tell you that, life is good. Now I'm still moving forward with things. Um, one thing I really want to do is uh, I, want to, I want to travel more. 
And that's what I have uh, in motion with my plan because I want to be able to travel more. Uh, not, not necessarily for YouTube purposes, but I want to be able to see the world and experience different societies and different cultures and, and the way that I'd always dreamed, right? And now I'm in a position where I can actually make that happen. So that's good. Some of you folks out there who, uh, who are watching this are living your dream. Good. I encourage you to encourage others to live their dream and show them how, show them the different steps they can take to get there, right? So that's all, that's all I want to say on that. Uh, I think one thing uh, personally, which I don't get too, usually get too personal on this channel, uh, but one thing personally I, uh, I like to mention is uh, I think it's really important to spend time with family. And if you got kids, you know, do whatever you can to prepare your kids for the future so that, you know, they can enjoy the fruits of your labor or they can just go about life with some sort of uh, head start, right? Um, I heard, uh, I've, I've heard many people say, hey, if I worked hard and to get to where I'm at and all the things I had to do to get to where I'm at, my kids want to do the same damn thing, right? I get that mindset as you want to teach your kids to, to get there. However, also a lot of kids get, fur, get far in life because they were given a head start. So if I can give my kid a head start some way, I'm going to do that, right? And I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's smart to do that. Because life ain't fair. Uh, this, this playing field in life is not fair. And, uh, you know, whatever you got to do to, you know, get your kids um, set up for the future, that's in your power, man. You should go about doing that. That's how, that's what I believe. But enough for that. Anybody out there got any questions, any comments? Uh, the first six minutes of the audio was not working. It's my bad, folks. Um, the microphone that I have, I cannot get it to work well. It does work, but I can't get it to work well. And then this microphone I was just now using was not even working. And I understand why, because the damn microphone was off. The damn, <laughs> I had the thing on mute. Silly stuff like that. But anyways, um, I got some. I got some videos coming out. Um, apart from the resort stuff, I've been doing some research on because I'm seeing folks, you know, on on YouTube, and uh, you know, going from places to places. You know, these travel YouTubers that tend to spend like maybe a few weeks at a time in, in the country, and. Uh, I like to be able to experience that, but at the same time, if I go someplace to really, really experience the place, I think it'd be good to spend like at least a month, at least a month. Uh, and to even go further, if you could spend like three months, four months, or even six months, in the country, that'd be dope too, because you'll be able to get the real essence uh, of that country and how you can fit in into that country. And but in a lot of those countries, you gotta have some sort of uh, visa. Visa. You can't. In many countries, you can't stay beyond what, three months, ninety days. Some countries go to one hundred eighty days. But most countries about 90 days or even 30 days. You can't stay beyond that uh, on a tourist visa, right? A lot of these places, you got to have some sort of visa or residency. So I've been doing some research on what countries I can actually go to using the uh, remote work, digital nomad uh, uh, purpose 
of getting a visa. And a lot of countries, believe it or not, a lot of countries offer a visa um, just for that. Yeah, you cannot work in that country on that type of visa, but you'll be, I guess at some level, a part of society in that country where you can get a uh, ID, uh, where you can, you know, get a feel for the country to figure out is would this be, to be the type of place that I like to stay full time uh, or for a long period of time. Uh, for those of you who are looking to get a, a second passport, you may want to uh, look into that. There's a lot of countries that give retirement visas, that give digital nomad visas, and uh, it'd be a way for you to get into a country and really uh, experience the country. Uh, I know that you living in Brazil. Well, I said living, uh, visiting Brazil. And I was in Brazil for about 10 days. You reach a lot of obstacles when you don't have that, that CP, what do you call it? CP number, which is basically like a, a, a cellular number here in DR or maybe the equivalent of a social security number in in the US. Yeah, you you cannot like I couldn't rent a scooter. I couldn't rent a bike. I couldn't uh certain I couldn't get a cell phone plan or I couldn't this is a I couldn't order food using um the equivalent of Uber Eats. It's just there was just so many roadblocks because I didn't have that CP CP number. And I'm thinking I want to. I like to go to go to Brazil and stay for a long period of time, maybe a month or two, to really get a feel for the country and get to see the country. Uh, but if I got that kind of roadblock, I'm not going to want to spend an extensive amount of time here because it just makes things simple. Things is too difficult. Yeah, you can use the 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 CP number of someone you know there, but I mean, I don't want to have to go through all that. It's just sort of like I know here in DR, uh, on a much, much, much lesser scale, uh, some folks catch roadblocks if they don't have a, a settler number. You know, some some places, they're not going to be dealing with uh, your passport number. They want you to have a, a, a settler number, a number, your ID number, excuse me, ID number. Um, I, re I remember reading in one of the uh, forums, expat forums, where a guy could not get, they brought, what is it, Elon Musk? He got some sort of, uh, I think it's called Starlink or whatever. Uh, it's a satellite internet service or cable service or the both. Uh, it's in DR right now. So one guy was talking about how he was getting that set up, but he couldn't get it set up because he doesn't have a cellular number. And he had to use the number of his neighbor, which his neighbor allowed him to use. Uh, to actually get that service. But I don't want to have to go through all that. So sometimes when you want to go to a country and you really want to be in a country and experience it and get a feel for it, uh, it's good to, to, to if, you're, if you're a digital nomad, why not just go on a digital nomad visa while you're there officially? You don't have to worry about uh, crossing the border after 30 days or 90 days or 120 days, whatever the uh, case may be. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. You can just sit back, uh, take in, absorb the experience, and and do what you can to enjoy yourself there. So I've been doing some research on that, and I found that a lot of countries. I mean, it, it's it's to the point where I was just, I, I, my eyes just got tired of reading all the different uh, countries and different programs and, and qualifications and all that stuff. Where it's just, it feels like. Out of the, how many countries are there in the world? Maybe what, 200 and something? Out of those 200 countries, I say about anywhere from 50 to 75% uh, offer some sort of digital nomad visa or retirement visa. And I'll be doing a, a video on this where I'll be getting to getting really into, into detail with all this. But for the most part, uh, uh, the digital nomad visa 
is for folks that work remotely. And then you have some, another one where it's the uh, rentista or the passive income visa, where uh, you have to have some sort of passive income in order to qualify for that visa, which could be uh, a retirement or which could be uh, disability or social security, uh, which could be uh, some sort of um, uh, uh, savings or investments that you that you have that you're getting uh, money from, uh, things like that, but not something actually that you're actually working for, right? That's that. That's more so the digital nomad visa, where the rentista passive income visa that is for folks who have a passive income, and there it is. And then retirement visa is usually geared towards uh, retirees or people who hold a pension. Um, then there's some countries that do like a combination of all that. So uh, there you have it. The only thing is, a lot of countries offer a uh, various amounts of income qualifications. You have you have some countries that are as low as I've seen. Uh, most countries do three times the uh, monthly salary of people who are the average person in their country, right? So in DR, for example, that amount is $1,500. As you can say, maybe the average person or average family brings in $500 a month. So that's about right. Uh, Brazil was the same thing, $1,500. Uh, but then I've seen other countries where it's uh, $2,000 for Argentina. I've seen $3,500 for uh, Mexico. And I've seen it be even more expensive. I think I saw in Taiwan. Taiwan was like, uh, like almost $6,000 a month. In some of those countries in in Europe, like Italy, uh, Spain, Greece, they also have really high numbers as well. Uh, so it all depends on you know what you're trying to get out of this experience. But a lot of countries offer some sort of uh, opportunity for you to stay there long term, and um, that's also a way to get into the country if you want to get work towards getting a uh, a um, permanent residency and citizenship, second passport. That's, that's that's your way in. Some folks don't really care about that, but a lot of folks are looking to get that uh, second passport, third passport, so that's the way you can go, out, go about doing that. Some countries you can get it quick. Some countries take a, little, take a longer time. Some countries have strict uh, amount of time you gotta spend in the country while you're on that visa or residency, while, or, when, you, when, you, when it's time for you to go apply for that uh, citizenship, naturalization, or you have uh, some countries where, look, you just gotta like pop in and out at least once a year or once every two years or once every three years. Yeah. Then it goes into the, the countries where you can actually buy uh, your residency or buy your uh, citizenship. And that's the whole other story. I ain't really get into all that, but. If you're interested, let me know and I can make a video on that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's that's basically it. That's all that comes to mind. If I don't have anyone popping in, then I'm, I'm going to call this a wrap. Um, so like I said before, I am broadcasting this live on my two channels, The Profe Guy You and the Profe Gallo in Espanol. Um, porque yo tengo ese, I have that, I have that other channel in Spanish because yo tengo mucha gente en mi canal que habla Espanol. Yo tengo muchos suscriptores que habla Espanol. Entonces, yo vivo aquí en Santo Domingo. Entonces, para mí, es, es, es obvio que yo, te, que yo debo hacer un, un canal para... Um, para tener un canal para, para ese público. Y yo no tengo muchos suscriptores ahora en este momento, pero estoy creciendo poco a poco y poco a poco yo voy a hacer muchos más videos. Um, voy a cubrir uh, temas 
sobre cosas aquí en la República Dominicana o temas para la gente que solo habla español. Uh, but that's it. I mean, um, I don't have anybody popping in. I don't have anybody with any questions. So uh, there it is. If you got any questions, I mean, even if you don't catch me on the live, you can always catch me on uh, on Instagram. Shoot me a message on Instagram. If you have any questions about, uh, you know, hand DR? Um, I'm I'm very much embedded in the, in DR, the Dominican society. Um, I'm a I'm a resident. Uh, I have my residency. I have my driver's license, my cellular, I have bank accounts. I've, uh, you know, I have a credit card. I rent a, rent a place and I'm even in the process of buying a place. I, uh, I, I've, I know a lot of Dominicans. I've been in many parts of the island. I frequent a lot of the uh, resorts here. The only thing I really don't do here um, in the R is go out, like go to like clubs and stuff like that. That's the probably the only thing I don't do that a lot of folks tend to reach out to me to ask, yo, what are the clubs like? You know, how you been in this club, that club? Like, I don't even go, man. To, to be honest, I don't even go. Uh, I'm more into, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out to relax or go out and eat some good food or maybe do some sightseeing, but that's it. That is it. So, if I don't have any questions, this is it. Muchas gracias por venir a mi canal. Thank you for tuning in, Profe Gallo. Dame gusta. Give me a like. Subscribe, share with your friends, family. Comparte, por favor, con toda tu familia, tus amigos, tus colegas. And um, that's it. You can catch me every Sunday around noon. I'll do about 30 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. Probably not more than an hour, depending on what's going on. But uh, that's it. Have a good day, people. Peace.